What paranormal activities have you witnessed? Not sure if this is considered paranormal, but when I get fevers as a child, I would always, in my fugue and pain infused state, hear a man counting in a very deep voice. He would count from one and up, as the numbers get larger, the voice gets louder and more intense. It started to get less frequent as I grew older and now I do not experience it anymore. I've brushed it aside as a recurring nightmare until only recently. I've learned that my sister would experience the exact same thing when she was younger as well. It's not the scariest thing, but it does send shivers down my spine trying to comprehend this. I went with my best friend during high school for summer vacation to his grandparents who live in the countryside in Japan. I stayed in his mom's old room which has a small wall closet. Just above this closet was a smaller closet door, like a foot and a half tall, and about 3 feet wide, just above it. Weird design. But their house is old. The first couple weeks, I was pretty jet lagged, and Japan is hot and humid. So I didn't really sleep at night. If my light was off at night though, I always felt uneasy about that small closet space. Something about it just felt darker than the rest of the room. Toward the end of the second week, I started to adjust to the time difference. One morning, I woke up, and that small door was open. It was unsettling. But I closed it, and just thought maybe it wasn't closed all the way and came loose. A couple nights later, I woke up feeling uneasy. It was dark, and I could kinda see. And I could see that small door was open. It was much darker than the rest of the room, like black, pitch dark. This was the first and only time I experienced paralysis. I was too scared to move, say, or do anything. I just felt this darkness coming from there. I don't remember sleeping that night, but I must've, because I remember waking up the next morning. I told my friend about it, who said his mom told him about something like that, too, when we got back home, and I talked to his parents. His mom kinda joked with me, so, I heard you met the ghost, apostrophe. I work in a cemetery, one evening I had stayed late to do some catch up work. I was taking pictures of some granite samples, to have on my phone, and had already locked up. I was alone. As I was holding my phone, I heard the doorway to the basement swing open, slam shut, and heard footsteps go down the stairs. I froze. I thought for sure someone had come in. I called out to see if it was someone from main tenkens. No reply. I got scared, because if it wasn't them someone had broken in. I stayed still for a bit, and listened then called out again. Nothing. Finally I got brave enough to look. No one there. I peeked down the basement. Empty. All the doors were still locked. When I was 3 I told my parents that my great grandmother came to me in a dream and said her feet didn't hurt anymore. I think she had problems due to diabetes or something. She had died that night. They received the call shortly after I told them. Not paranormal, but a spooky coincidence. When I was 6 I slept on a bunk bed in a room alone. The bottom bunk was empty, was meant for my younger brother, but he was too scared of sleeping in a bed alone. So I was alone in that room that night. I remember a chilling feeling. That night then it suddenly got really warm. Probably because I was undergoing a night terror of some sort. Then I start breathing heavily, and open my eyes, and see the room is empty. My little night light in the corner of the room comforts me back to sleep. Except as I closed my eyes I felt a heavy hand petting my shoulder. My eyes rip open and there was no one in the room. As soon as I lay back down the petting continued, and I covered my head just pretending to myself that it was my mom it took me 12 years to stop sleeping with my head under the covers because of that memory, my mom, of course, knew a woman passed away in that apartment before we moved in, so she always believed it was that woman trying to comfort me. My parents had flown to Houston when I was 11 years old to see a specialist for my dad's lymphoma. It had just returned from remission, but there was no reason to think he was in any imminent danger. I was riding my bike home the day they were to fly back and stop my bike in this ditch we used to ride down slash up on our way back. When I got to the top I felt a wave of emotion come over me and without even knowing what I was saying I told my friend I was riding with that my dad had just died. My friend was like, what? I just knew. 
I rode the rest of the way home to find my grandparents, my dad's parents, bullying on our back porch. I stood there watching them in the doorway for a few minutes unable to walk out to talk to them. He had died an hour before I got home from school. No phone calls to the school, nor did I interact with anyone that knew prior to riding in the ditch. I just knew when that wave came over me, again. There was no reason to think he was even remotely close to passing. He had caught pneumonia while in Houston and died from that. My family's old house backed onto a pretty substantial forested ravine. I slept on the ground level floor and my room was at the back of the house. On four separate occasions, over the span of five years, I saw a middle-aged man dressed in a flannel shirt, blue jeans, and a red hat walk through my room with a dog leash in his hand. He would briefly stop at the same spot every time, and look around, then keep walking towards the ravine. I should note that this was fairly new construction in a suburb of a small city, and all that had been there previously was forest. I think he lost his dog in the ravine at some point, and he was there trying to find it. One time I woke up in the middle of the night and I checked my phone to see the time, and then as I was about to lay down and close my eyes I checked in front of me, and a huge tall humanoid shadow figure was standing there blocking the view of a broken wall clock and I just started panicking and it still was there after many seconds and eventually it just disappeared after I looked away from it for a second. My mum confessed that my imaginary friend taught me to read, and they were very freaked out about it. Thanks Duncan. I have no memory of you whatsoever, and have no idea where I got the name Duncan from, but I still enjoy reading, so I appreciate the lessons. One weekend, I was at my dad's house. He'd come to the upstairs bathroom to get a shave, and heard footsteps in my stepsister's room. I thought it was him walking around initially. So I got up, to find him standing at her closed door. He looks back at me, and whispers you can hear that too. Right. I nodded and he opened the door slowly. My stepsister was asleep, and never had been awake apparently. There was no way she could have crossed the room, gotten in bed, and pretended to be that convincingly asleep in the two seconds it took my dad to open the door. He went in, checked her TV which had never been on. She had one of those big ones from the 90s that would get warm when turned on. The radio hadn't been on either, figured maybe it was the beat of a song or something. After that, we heard the footsteps a bunch of times, usually very early in the morning. Some of the footsteps were so heavy, they'd shake the ceiling fan of the dining room directly under her bedroom and they'd woken her up a few times as well. Whenever I'd shower at my dad's, I always felt like someone was standing behind me, eventually. I got so stressed and paranoid that I refused to shower at the house or even go into the upstairs bathroom. My dad asked me one day do you ever feel like someone's in the shower with you when you're here? After months of me feeling that way and never mentioning it to anyone. At my mom's old apartment I used to have this feeling I was always being watched. Then I was starting to wake up at 3am consistently. On one of the nights I had woken up I heard someone call out my name. It was a women's voice, but I didn't recognize it. She kept calling out my name and walking towards my bed getting closer, but I didn't see anything. I freaked out, jumped off my bed, and ran into my brother's room. I hopped into bed with him and tried waking him up. The punk sleeps like the dead he still sleeps like that. I heard her footsteps follow me until his doorway. After that every time I woke up in the middle of the night I just ran into his room and slept on the top bunk. We had bunk beds. My mother still doesn't believe that happened. Thankfully we only lived there for a couple of months then moved out. My brother was on the phone once with his GF when she started saying that she could hear some old lady asking my brother for a glass of water. There was nobody around him so he ignored it but she kept on insisting. He hung up the phone and went to check on our grandma who was in her bedroom and found her dead. Fast forward a couple of years, around 11 p.m. I was on the phone with a girl when I saw a guy on a bicycle go past, phone was by the window sill, same spot as my brother. That's when I noticed she stopped talking and asked her if she was still there. She apologized as she thought I got into trouble. I said no and asked why she said that and she replied with someone was telling me to stop talking on the phone. It's late. Go to bed. I was on my own. 
Everybody in the house was already asleep. I asked her if it was an old lady, and she said yes. Told her it's my grandma, and that the same thing happened to my brother. She started talking about ghosts and stuff, so I told her I'm hanging up, and bolted into my room. My family and I used to stay in a very affordable beach cottage in the Outer Banks, NC for a few weeks each summer. It was a converted life-saving station, with a lookout tower and everything. I was just a kid, 13 or 14, when we first started staying there. I used to walk around and talk to the local kids. They were shocked that I was staying there. I didn't believe them BC kids are gonna be kids and I figured they were just trying to scare me. I was wrong. The first few nights were quiet, but every night after that something would happen. My aunt claimed that her bed raised off the floor and shook violently, knocking her to the floor. She slept in the car for the remainder of our vacation. I'm a bratty kid and just figure she was drunk. I stayed upstairs in the room where they used to keep rescued and dying sailors. I woke up one morning to such loud banging in my room. I was terrified. Nobody was there. One of the beds had overturned while I was sleeping. The next night I woke up to more banging and loud laughter from the tower. I figured it was my sister on the phone. But nobody was there. As the days went on, I felt like somebody was watching me anytime I showered or used the upstairs bathroom. The banging in the tower was nightly at this point, and I was absolutely terrified. One morning I had slept in, being a teenager at all, and woke up to my relatives trying to get into the house after a morning at the beach. Every single door in the entire house was deadlocked from the inside. Very odd. We spent a few more summers there, each time the same experience. Eventually the house washed away during a hurricane leaving only the tower behind on the beach. It's a shame. Because I'd love to stay there as an adult and see. At least once every couple of years, I'll be walking around the apartment at night, when it's dark. But I can still see enough to get around. And I'll have some shadow slash figure type thing suddenly come out of nowhere and get right up in my face. So close that I can feel like I'm breathing on it. It disappears immediately after. Late one weekend night my parents were out at a party, so it was just my sister and I home. I heard my parents come home. So like a kid I instantly shut off all my video games and pretended to be asleep. As a kid I always went to bed with the little lamp on I hopped in bed and pretended to be asleep when I heard someone enter my room and head for the light on my dresser. Their back was to me and I saw they were reaching for my lamp to turn it off. Just as I had that thought. They turned around and looked directly at me and stared for what felt like forever. I couldn't see much detail. I was peeking through my closed eyes as discreetly as I could, other than a large old to me looking brown dress, like Victorian era, and what looked like the face of an old woman. Where their eyes were it was very dark, and I couldn't make out any details. I saw them smile at me and then shut the light off. Before I fell asleep the next morning at breakfast my parents said they were surprised that I fell asleep with the light off, since normally I left it on. I asked everybody in the house if they did it and no luck. I have no idea how to explain it to this day. What's even more bizarre is recently I found a picture of my great grandmother who died of old age some 40 years before I was born. She was wearing a dark Victorian style dress in the image. I don't believe in paranormal activity, but my grandparents house is considered by many to be extremely haunted. It's part of a tour of haunted houses in the LA area, and according to legend was part of the inspiration for American Horror Story. There are tons of stories, but the one I experienced myself was when I was living there as a child. I was about 6 yo and my older sister was 12, and we shared a room. My mom had decorated our bedside table with an antique telephone that didn't work and was not plugged in. My sister and I were asleep and for some reason we both woke up at the same time and turned to face each other. I remember feeling an extreme feeling of dread. Then the phone rang in between us. We locked eyes and both hid under our blankets till it stopped ringing. We both thought it was a dream because we didn't say anything for years about it. Then one day she was talking about it, and we realized we had had the exact same experience. There are so many more stories but that's the only one I experienced directly. I used to have a recurring nightmare about skinny tall man in a trench coat slowly walking towards me. 
had his creepy cold face burned into my brain pretty common stuff. Years and years later I was coming home from college. Called the elevator. Doors open, and, I almost s myself. That skinny tall man in a trench coat, is looking straight at me. From the mirror. I don't know how a child's brain can predict exactly what they will look like in their youth. But yeah. S was creepy. I was awoken one night to a loud crash in my bathroom. I went in and all of the things on my sink top were in the middle of the floor. I mean. About 3 feet away from the sink. Everything. Not just one thing fell over and knocked the other into the sink. But toothbrush. Toothpaste. Hair gel. Face wash. E4. Hand soap. All on the floor in the middle of the bathroom. What was even worse is that. Between waking up and going to check out the bathroom. As I crossed the landing back to my room I noticed a light had come on downstairs. I went down and both the hall light and living room light were on. Except none of the light switches were in the on position. I had to click the switch on slash off to make them switch off. I was living on my own at the time and it freaked me out a little bit. But I'm still in the same house and have had no other experiences. When I saw this thread I thought about my experience in Turkmenistan. For work, I was in the capital of Ashgabat, waiting for my apartment lease to be approved by the local council. So I had to stay at their hotel. For context, Turkmenistan is also one of the toughest countries to get into, and this was post-pandemic, so even their biggest hotel that used to house dignitaries was also empty and dusty. I fell asleep after video killing my boyfriend. I was awoken with my duvet lifted from one edge, bringing half of it diagonally midair and almost wavy, all while hearing chants by a male voice in my left ear in a language I didn't understand. It was so fast and rough. I tried reciting all the prayers slash Quranic verses I could. I was born Muslim, but I don't practice anymore, and it stopped for a short second, only to begin again with almost a mocking laughter in between the chants. At the same time I could feel my left hand fingers being pulled repeatedly. It ended as the sun rose. I immediately called my friend who was 3 hours ahead in time zone to just debrief and process what the f just happened. Told this to some friends and local colleagues. And yes, they theorized some regional gins. Of course I checked the f out tab there that morning and moved into a staff boarding house. Most terrifying experience of my life.